Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today is Wednesday, so it's our KiCad tutorials. Uh, I'm JP, so if you're new to this channel, Blumpbot is basically a hobby channel, DIY, build yourself, but we also teach people about PCB design, so KiCad and Altium mainly. So once a week, I create a video tutorial to help you guys in your PCB design journey. So in today's video, I'm gonna speak about simulating schematics in KiCad. So this is quite new for most of you, but you can actually simulate your circuit in KiCad. So that's what this video is about. It is really sticking to basics, so we're not gonna get too complicated. We're just gonna simulate some resistors, circuits, some current voltages, resistors in series, resistors in parallel, um, just to get the idea, just to get used to using the KiCad environment in the simulation environment. And then next week, I'm going to go a bit further deeper, how to create your own Spice modules, maybe make a triple five timer circuit and really get into simulating using GeekCAD. But this video is really just getting your fingertip wet or your tongue wet, wet or some, get something wet. <laughs> what is it saying? I don't even know. Uh, get your toes wet. That's it. That's it. Your toes wet, I think. Uh, but anyway, guys, let's get started. So the first thing we do is we create a project, create a sim sim simulation sheet. I just called it that name and then I double click on it and I have my sheet that I'm used to. So the difference now is we're going to draw a circuit for simulation. So to do that, we push A. So normally we just push a normal component on and then we start pulling our circuit for PCB. If you do that, then the components are not always ready to be simulated with. So for example, if I take a audio amplifier, it has no spice module and you have to actually put the spice model here. We'll get that later in a second video I'll do next week. In this video, I just want to show you guys how to get started. So what we do is push A again and we type in spice. So these are the components we can use to simulate now as a beginner, first time, and just to find out how it works and how to set it up. As you can see, it's got capacitors, diode, and all the big, most popular components, and then some voltage sources and some current sources. So let's build a circuit, and then you'll see how this works. It's actually quite easy. Let's get started. First thing we do is I'm going to make a circuit with just a resistor. Let's see if we can measure the current going through resistor. So I've got spice. Do I see a resistor somewhere? Yes, resistor. And you can see it's for simulation only. So it does not have a footprint you can take to a PCB to create a PCB office. This is just for simulation. But later on, I'll show you guys, you can actually use real resistors that has footprints. But like I said, it's just the beginning of a beautiful journey we'll take on simulating in KiCad. So we've got a resistor. Now we need some power source. We type in spice again. And we go to the bottom and we see voltage source DC. And I put it here and you can see my plus minus. And now I'm going to do what we used to do, create our line, add our power of, let's say, 5 volts, and add our ground. Let's first add our 5 volts there as well. C for copy. Now we need a ground. So the ground is important for reference. As spice, and you'll see 0 volt. We have to use this volt this ground and not the normal ground that we used to. So this is our simulation ground and now we've got this. I have to give my resistor some value now, double click and I'll just make it 470. Okay, so now I've got 470 ohms and my DC I want 5 volts. So what I do is you can see sparse module DC1, I can change this to a 5 or I go to edit sparse model and there you can see one, I'll make it five. Okay. Okay, now I've got five volts going through a 470 ohm resistor. We go tools, annotate schematic, annotate. Now I've got my R1 VCC. So what we do now is go to tools, simulator, and a nice window pops up. First thing we have to do is go to settings and choose what we want to do. So there's different things we can do. So you can see DC source is V1. This DC transfer is actually just a step. So it will go starting voltage. You can set it. So if you make it zero volt and then final volt, and then final volts of five volts, 
and increments of one volt. Then it will slowly step up. It will give my circuit one volt, and then it'll give it two volts until five volts. Uh, so this is where you want to step up DC to see what the circuit does at certain voltages. So we're not going to use that. We can use a transient. So we're just going to measure the voltage over a certain time. So time step uh, is like the sample rate. So how often you're going to measure this voltage or current. So I'll make this one milliseconds. And for how long? We're going to do it for 10 seconds. Okay. Now you can see I can run the simulation. And then you'll actually see some values pop at the bottom. My, my voltage is 5 volts, which I said. And V1 branch is actually my current going through it. So it says it's minus 0 0.0106 amps. So that's about 10, 10 milliamps. Does that make sense? Let's see. So if I've got a 5 volt and I divide it by 470, we get 0 0.0163. You see, it's, it's exactly the same. So this is calculated the current of through our resistor without us doing it. But you can see the negative. KiCad is based on Alti Spice, and they've got a thing of the negative current. That is because real current actually runs from negative to positive, and conventional current actually runs from positive to negative. Um, so it always takes it from negative to positive, but when we do calculations in design, we normally go from positive to negative. So don't worry too much about the negative. It's just the way Alti Spice does it. I know in Alti Spice you can rotate the resistor, and then it should become positive, but it, has, it did not work for me in this scenario, and I'm not too sure why. But it doesn't matter, the absolute value is perfect. Now let's see if we can put some graphs on here. So we can go add signals, and you'll see the three main signals here, the voltage of my system. Um, I only have one supply, and I only have one resistor, so the voltage of the system is 5 volts, and the current through my resistor will be the same as the system, because I only have one resistor. So you can see it's about 10 10 point something volts. So there you can see it actually become positive when I rotate the resistor. So this value will always show the, the negative value, but here you can see it positive. So if we rotate our resistor again, that value will probably go negative. Let's see. Yeah, you can see it went negative. So if you want a positive, <laughs> negative, swap your resistors. In real life, it does not matter, right? A resistor does not, not have polarity. So this is just a program thing that they did. Um, so there you can see the value there is the same value as we calculated for our current. What we're going to do now is add another resistor in series. So what we expect now is resistance in series increases the resistance and therefore decreases the current with Ohm's law, V equals IR. Guys, I'm not too sure at everyone's levels on this channel. So if you would like me to go into more details about basic electronics, about resistors in series and parallel, please let me know. Um, I'm assuming most of you know about Ohm's law. If not, let me know in the comment and I'll actually make videos about basic electronics and calculating different circuit voltages. Let me know. So we copy this and we put it there. So now we've got two resistors in series. I'm just going to tools annotate. So resistance in series, my resistance increases, which decreases my voltage, <laughs> decreases my current, sorry. And then I'm assuming this value here should become half because I've got the exact same value. So it's going to double, which is going to half my current. But what also happens is my voltage gets split, split across these resistors. So the volt drop, I'll have a volt drop across R1, I'll have a volt drop across R2, and these two volt drops added together should give me 5 volts. So I'm assuming 2.5 volts here and 2.5 volts here. But let's see what our simulator tells us. That's what I'm thinking will happen. Let's see. So I've got simulator. Uh, settings still are fine. And I can add signals. I can also double click here to remove it. So let's add signal. I need to first run it, sorry. And there you can see my current is half of my previous calculator that we calculated here. Minus, let's say 0 0.10 and now it's 0 0.05. Let's add some signals. Now you can see there's more added here. I can measure the current through R1, R2. I can measure the voltage. So now you see, I, need, I, I don't only have 5 volts. So when I double click on 5 volts, you'll see I get a nice 5 volt line. What we also can do to measure different uh, places in the circuit is use the probe button. So when I click on probe, I can actually double click on a certain position on the circuit. So like I said, I've got 5 volts here, 
and then I'll have a volt drop that will happen here and I'll lose some voltage across that resistor and then I'll have a different voltage here than the 5 volts. So if we double click on this line and we go back, we can see we've got 2.5 volts. That means my voltage at this point is 2.5 volts. That's why I said the volt drop across this resistor should be 2.5 volts and the volt drop across this resistor will be 2.5 volts. Because what happens is if I got 2.5 volts here, my potential difference is still 2.5 volts across the resistor because I've got 5 volts minus my 2.5 volts. So then my potential difference on R2 is also 2.5 volts because I've got 2.5 volts minus my 0 volts. So the potential difference across this resistor and this resistor of both 2.5 volts. Let's add some resistors in parallel. So we'll take this one, we'll just put it here and then we'll connect it like this. So now we got resistors in parallel. So resistors in parallel, the voltage will stay the same across them because the voltage in parallel stays constant and my resistance will actually decrease by this formula on the right. So what you expect now is my current to be at least double this. So we're expecting 0.20 because I am actually halving my resistance, which doubles my current. But let's see if the simulation agrees with me. Add signals, and now you can see I've got two currents, R1 and R2. And there we go. You can see at the bottom it's 0.021 which is double this. And okay, so if I zoom in here, I should get about 0. This is my total current, but the current flowing through one resistor is still minus 10. And if I add another signal, then you get exactly the same. I've got 0. 0.21 amps running through my whole circuit. So we'll get to this node and then we'll split in half. So half of the current will go through here and half of the current will go at the bottom and then join to the top. Let's play around a bit. So. These resistors are equal, that means the current will equally, equally be split between them. But what happens if I make this, let's make this 500, oh that's just the text, let's make sure we change it properly, 500, and we make this 1000. So logically we think that double the current should flow through my 500, which flows through my 1000, which is a kilo ohm. What I mean by that, if let's say example, I've got 10 milliamps flowing through here, then I should have 20 milliamps flowing through, through the 500 because it's half of the five of the thousand. And when my resistance is halved, my current is doubled because of Ohm's law. But let's see. So I've got tools again, simulator, run simulator, and you can see minus 15. Now let's see what happens. So I've got R1 which is let's say minus 10 and R2 which is double or oh, it's actually R2 is but let's say minus 5 and R1 is actually minus 10 so it's double like we thought so so let's just make sure R2 we are assuming is the bigger one and R1 is the smaller one are we right yes so what we saw here and what we are simulating here makes sense. Let's try one more different component. So let's go A again, spice, and let's try a diode. So a diode blocks current, right? So, and we know a diode's fault drop is always 0 0.7 volts around about there. So that means when I apply voltage there, the volt drop across this diode will be about 0.7 volts. So I'm expecting the volt drop across the resistor to be about 4.3. Again, just what going on in my mind. Let's see if it's true. Annotate, tools, simulate, settings. We have to make sure this is still fine. One millisecond. This is just a preference, um, no real reason. Run simulation. And there you can see, you can see there's some um, 0.7 there already. I'm assuming that's the diode. And that's the current through the circuit. So we can go probe, let's probe. And we go probe over the diode. There you can see 0 0.7, 710 millivolts. And then if I probe there, I'll get 5 volts. So I've got 0.7 here and 5 volts there. That means the volt drop across my resistor is 0 0.3.
there we go five volts on top so if I probe or add signals it's basically the same and the current through my diode what happens if I turn my diode around so it should actually block my current right let's see as you can see five volts five volts no volt drop let's add current to see what the current is through the resistor and you can see it's zero basically zero there should be probably some no, not 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 so that meant our diode blocked our current great that's it um, i hope you enjoyed the video i hope it was useful um, if there's any one of you that don't understand the basics of electronics yet like where i spoke about current in a circuit ohm's law resistance in series resistors in parallel let me know should i start making more videos about that i don't know the audience or yeah, the subscribers the viewers um, what your background is i know some of you are very advanced way more than me but some of you might find it useful uh, to take a step back and focus on the basics of electronics uh, let me know in the comments should i start making videos about that and then i'll do so that's why i'm here um, but yes hopefully that was useful we only focus on basic stuff in this video like i said just getting your toes wet um, and then next week we'll go a bit deeper uh, trying to make a nice circuit with a triple five timer and then seeing the signal pulse a bit and changing some values on the capacitors trying trying to change the duty cycle things like that um, thanks guys so every wednesday i will make a pcb design tutorial either ekicad or ltm have a fantastic day enjoy the summer if you're in the north enjoy the winter if you're in the south uh, have a great day bye